Hi, this is Wendy Lightheart, and today we're going to look at a general factoring strategy. So this is a copy of the factoring procedures handout that I um, gave to you in class. It's also posted on Moodle if you are not there to get that copy. So be sure that before you continue on watching this video, you should have this factoring procedures handout in front of you so you can refer to it as we go through a few examples. So this first example, we need to factor 4x squared minus 16x minus 48. So here are the three steps that we'll be following as we factor these polynomials. The very first step, whenever you're factoring, and it's very, very important that you always do this step, and that is to look to see if there is a greatest common factor, and if there is, you need to factor it out. You will have some polynomials that if you don't factor out the greatest common factor, you will not be able to continue factoring. Um, and there are other polynomials that if you don't factor out the greatest common factor, you just make it much more difficult to factor. Um, so it's very important that the first thing you do when you're factoring is to look for a GCF and factor it out if there is one. So this one you may have noticed that there is a factor of 4 that's common between all these terms. So we factor out the 4 first, which will leave us with 4 times the remaining polynomial x squared minus 4x minus 12. Now look at step 2. Step 2 says to count the number of terms there are in the remaining polynomial. So that's what we're going to do next. So we're looking at the x squared, that would be our first term, and then we have a second term, and a third term. Notice that the greatest common factor that we factor out is not part of that remaining polynomial, so it's not counted as a term. So this is a three-term polynomial that we need to factor next. So we're going to look under the column that has the title three terms, and we need to, to to determine which of those forms our trinomial has. So you probably already determined that we have the form x squared plus bx plus c because we don't have any coefficient on the x squared term. So that means that we're going to place parentheses with x's in the front to start off factoring that trinomial. Notice that the greatest common factor of 4 still needs to remain out front and then we're looking to see what two numbers need to go inside with the x's. And those two numbers will need to be able to multiply to give us negative 12 and add to give us negative 4. Those numbers are negative 6 and positive 2. So we place those numbers inside the parentheses with the x's. And again, we keep that greatest common factor out front with each step because that's part of our answer. And then you'll note that at the bottom of most of these columns, it says that you should check the remaining factors to see if they can be factored further. And note that the x minus 6 and the x plus 2 cannot be factored any further. And so we are done with this polynomial. Here's our next example. We need to factor 5x to the 6th power minus 405x squared. What's your first step? Right, the first step is to factor out any greatest common factor that you might see. So notice that 5 and 405 have a common factor of 5, but we also have a, um, an x on each of those terms, so we can pull out um, the x squared as part of our GCF. So our first step is going to be to factor out a GCF of 5x squared, so that will leave us with an x to the fourth and a minus 81 as our remaining terms. Our next step is to count the number of terms in this remaining polynomial. So we count the terms, and that would be the x to the fourth would be one term, and the negative 81 would be our second term. So this time we have two terms left in our remaining polynomial. 
So we're going to look under the column heading two terms and follow the procedures in that column. So in this class we are not going to see any sum of cubes or difference of cubes. You will see that in the next math class. So you can ignore those two forms and so you'll only be looking to see if you have a difference of squares if you have two terms to factor. So x to the fourth is a perfect square because it has an even exponent and 81 is 9 times 9 so it is also a perfect square and we have a subtraction sign between them so we do have a difference of squares. So we're going to use that formula again the 5x squared GCF will stay out front and then the a for part of that formula is going to be x squared because x squared squared is where we get the x to the fourth term and then we'd have to square the number 9 to get the 81 so we're going to have a positive 9 in one set and a negative 9 in the other set for our plus b and our minus b. So now we need to check to see if any of these factors can be factored further. Note that one of these factors can be factored further. The x squared plus 9 is a sum of squares, so it cannot be factored any further. However, the x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares, so we can factor that one further. And that's a difference of squares again, so we're going to use the same instructions under the two terms column, which is to use that formula for difference of squares. And so Again, the 5x squared and the x squared plus 9 factors will stay the same, but the x squared minus 9 will factor into x plus 3 and x minus 3 using that formula for the difference of squares. And now none of those factors can factor any further, so we're done. Here's one more this one we need to factor 3x squared minus x minus 10. So first step is to look for a greatest common factor and factor it out. Well this one there is no GCF. The coefficients don't have any common factors and there is not an x on every one of those terms so there is no GCF. So then our first step is going to be to count terms. So we count the 3x squared is one term, the negative x is our second term, and the negative 10 is our third term. So we have three terms that we need to factor. So we're going to look under the column titled three terms, and there are two forms that we could have. So we have to determine whether this is of the form x squared plus bx plus c, or is it of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Well because of that 3 coefficient on the x squared, that means we have an ax squared plus bx plus c form. So the instructions for that is to factor by grouping and you start that by multiplying the a times the c. So we'd multiply 3 times negative 10 to get negative 30. And you're thinking, trying to think of two numbers that multiply to give you negative 30 and add to give you the b term, which, which is negative 1. Can you think of what those numbers will be? Hopefully you thought of the numbers negative 6 and positive 5. Those two numbers multiply to give you negative 30 and add to give you negative 1. Now what we do with those numbers is different than if we had the form x squared plus bx plus c, remember. We have to split up our trinomial into four terms by splitting that negative x term in the middle into negative 6x and positive 5x. And again, that's using the negative 6 and 5, which are the two numbers that multiply to give you the negative 30 and add to give you the negative 1. So now we're ready to go move on to the four terms column and follow the instructions to factor by grouping. So we group the first two terms and the last two terms and you're looking for a greatest common factor to factor out of each group. 
the first group has a greatest common factor of 3x, and the second group has a greatest common factor of 5. When we pull those greatest common factors out, we will end up with a common binomial factor of x minus 2. And so our next step is to factor out that common binomial factor. And then the 3x and the plus 5 that remains will be our other factor. Note that none of these factors can be factored any further, and so we're done. So um, when we're factoring from now on, you need to be thinking in terms of these steps. Using the factoring procedures handout as you're first getting used to this procedure, and then hopefully you'll be able to do it on your own without having to refer to that handout. So very importantly, remember to always factor out a greatest common factor first, if there is one. Then you're going to count the terms, and that will tell you whether you're looking for a procedure to follow under the two terms column, or the three terms column, or the four terms column. And after you follow the, those instructions, you also need to make sure that you're finished factoring. So check all the factors to see if any of those factors can be factored further. And if so, you will go back to one of the columns, whichever one is appropriate, and follow the procedures to factor that remaining factor. And you keep doing that until you are finished. So we'll go through several more examples through in class and maybe even have time to do an activity where you can work together in groups um, trying to factor all these different polynomials that will be all mixed up and so you'll have to figure out how you're going to approach each of those problems. That's it for today. Bye-bye.